Welcome to this Impressive Buttons tutorial. Today you will learn how to set up the Impressive Buttons Unity package in your project, all of the different settings which the buttons have, as well as some basic scripting. By the end of this video you will have set up your Unity project and have made a basic script for your button. Inside Unity Hub, press the blue drop down arrow and select the correct Unity version for your project. Give your project a name and then wait for it to initialize. When this is done, grab the VRChat SDK 3 that you have gotten from the download link and drag it into your file hierarchy. When this is done, you can then drag the Udon Sharp Unity package into your file hierarchy as well. Finally, you can then import the Impressive Buttons Unity package into your file hierarchy. When all the importing is done, make sure that you are getting no Unity errors and that all of the project files are present. Next up you can open the examples Unity scene. Go into play mode, select a button and press the trigger interact button to make sure that the buttons are working properly. Make sure to go out of play mode once you are done testing. Next up we will be setting up our very own button. Choose one of the button prefabs that you like and drag it into your Unity scene. You can then adjust its position and rotation in the transform component on the right of your screen. Let's go over each of the settings that each button object contains. The global events checkbox determines whether a button press should be sent to all connected players on the server or just the local player. The master only checkbox determines whether a button should only be visible to the master of the instance or to everybody. The enable classic interact in VR checkbox determines whether a player should see that blue hue around a button when they are in VR mode or not. The feet pressing checkbox determines whether players should be able to press buttons with their feet or not. The send on press event 2 array contains all of the script components that should receive the on press event when the button is pressed. This basically means that when the button is pressed all of these scripts should receive the event. On press sound and on depress sound are pretty self-explanatory. They are the sounds which are played when the button is pressed and depressed. The rest of the settings are all options for specific button models. You shouldn't have to change these, except if you intend to make your own button model. After adding the new button to our scene, we can go into play mode and make sure that it's working properly. Let's go out of play mode and try changing some of the settings. For my button, I decided to change some of the sounds and raise the button top height. Going back into play mode, we can see that that is all working fine. Now let's make the button do something. I decided to make a random cube and moved it into view. Then press add component on your game object and add a udon behavior component. Then go into the impressive buttons scripts examples folder and select any of the scripts that you like. I decided to use the toggle object script because I wanted to make the cube appear and disappear. Grab the udon script and drag it into the empty udon behavior you just added to the game object. Depending on which script you added to your behavior, there may be new variables at the bottom of the udon behavior component. This was the case with the script that I selected because it wants to know a game object which to toggle on and off. So I went into the game hierarchy on the left and dragged the cube into itself, so that it will toggle itself on and off. Finally, we need to tell the button to run this toggle object script when it is pressed. 
To do this, we go into the button object and fold open the send on press event to array. We set its size to one so that it can contain one script. And then we can drag the cube into the newly appeared field. If we go into play mode now and we press the button, we can see the cube toggling on and off. Let's go make our own script for the button to run. Right click anywhere in your file hierarchy, create, U sharp script. Give it a name and wait for it to load. When it is done, double click the C sharp script so that it opens in your text editor. Let's make a script that teleports an object one meter up every time it is ran. Rename the start function to onPress, watch your capitalization because this is what the button script will be looking for. Also add a public in front of the function so that the button script can access it. Finally, I get the game object's position and add one meter on the y-axis using a vector. And that's all the coding we have to do. Now we can remove the old Udon behavior component from our cube and add a new one. When that's done, we can drag our new script into the Udon behavior. Finally, we can then drag our updated cube into the button's on press event to array. Then we can go into play mode and test it out. I hope this tutorial was helpful and I can't wait to see what you create. I hope to see you in the next video and until then, bye bye.